Hello students, how are you all? Hope you all are liking my videos. Today we will start chapter 8 of history that is Ashoka, the emperor who gave up the war. Before that, do share this video with all your friends and subscribe my channel and hit the bell button so that you will get all the notification. Let's start the chapter. So, coming to chapter, what we are going to study in this chapter? We are going to study about the empire and dynasty. Rise of modern empire. Ashoka the Great, about the Ashoka the Great. The war of Kalinga and Ashoka's inscription. And then Ashoka's Dhamma and his messages for the future generation of Indian civilization and in elsewhere we will study about the great wall of china coming to the topic about ashoka emperor who gave up war before starting to the topic ashoka let understand how the empire is different from kingdom empire is ruled by the emperor and it is much larger in contrast to a kingdom where as kingdom is ruled by a king. Now when we say it is much larger, so it is larger in term of resources, it is larger in term of area and to maintain much bigger area, you have to arrange much bigger army and for maintaining so much big army, you need a lot of taxes and for the taxes the emperor will conquest more land so the collection and for the collection of taxes the emperor needs lot of people and they appoint local governors for that whereas in the kingdom the king has direct control over the whole territory and they used to keep small officials to collect the resources. Empire have flexible boundaries and have many local custom. Now we will start with how the modern dynasty work. Before that, what is dynasty? When members of the same family become rulers one after another, then the family is called a dynasty. And the Maurya dynasty was with three important rulers. First of the major ruler of the Maurya dynasty was Chandragupta Maurya. He was succeeded by his son Bindusar who was finally succeeded by his son Ashoka. Let understand the Maurya dynasty and about Chandragupta Maurya. So, Chandragupta Maurya was supported by his wise person known as Chanakya. His real name was Vishnugupta. The kingdom of Magadha was founded by Mahapadmananda. After his death, the kingdom was divided into eight parts by his eight sons. They ruled for 12 years. These sons were cruel, pleasure-loving and oppressive. They imposed heavy taxes on the people. Thus, they become unpopular. It weakened the kingdom. One of these sons insulted Kautilya, a Brahmana in his court. On that day, Kautilya took a vow that he would bring the downfall of the Nanda dynasty. He was a teacher of a Arthashastra. He groomed Chandragupta Maurya, a Kshatri, and encouraged him to march against the Nanda kingdom. Now, the in his book, Ashastra, he explained the various techniques to fight wars. Again, in Ashastra, he explained that India has been divided under northwest and south. In northwest, he explained that it's a mainly the blanket that are common, and in South India, it's the mainly the gold and precious stones that are important. So that was what the Chan Chanakya explained in his book Ashastra. Now, when we talk about Chandragupta Maurya, he was the first emperor who started the Maurya dynasty. So, in this map, you see there were several cities in the empire. These include the capital Patliputra, Takshashila and Ujjain. 
So in this map, you can see the hierarchy in the development of the Maurya dynasty. So this was the initial Magadha that could be seen. Under the Chandragupta Maurya conquest, this was the area of the northern India that became the part of the Maurya dynasty. When Chandragupta Maurya defeated the Alexander and Seleucus, the part of the present Pakistan became the part of the Maurya dynasty or the part of Chandragupta dynasty. Later on, he conquested the part of the southern India and finally, under the Ashoka, the part of Kalinga in Odisha and the southern India came under the Maurya dynasty. So, that was the final map or final extent, we can say, of the Maurya dynasty. So, it not only covered the present day India, but rather than Indian subcontinent. So, that was the expense of Chandragupta and Ashoka. And in this map, those marked with the blue reveal the conquest area of Chandragupta and those in the southern India. India are the part of Ashoka Empire. As we said that most of the Indian subcontinent became the part or the conquest of the Maurya dynasty. Now we have three things to understand. Here we have underlined Takshishila, Ujjain and Patliputra. Now Patliputra was the main capital of Maurya dynasty. Since Patliputra was the capital region. So, it was ruled by the emperor itself. The area under the Maurya dynasty was so huge that it was difficult to rule from a single sea. So, therefore, Takshishila and Ujjain become the provisional capital. However, these provisions were important. It was again an important question. Takshishila was important because it was the connecting link to the northwest from the center Asia. So it was the major center which become the connective link or you can say uh, the gateway to the India from the center Asia. Now when we talk about the Ujjain, Ujjain was the provisional capital because it was connecting link between North India and the South India. So, therefore, Takshishila and Ujjain came up as a provisional capital and you have a Patliputra which was a capital city. So, merchants, officials and craftspersons probably live in the villages. In other areas, there were villages of farmers and herders. Central Asia was forested area and people gathered forest produce and hunted animals. Now, here we have completed few topics for the further please subscribe my channel hit the bell icon so that you can get the notification thank you have a nice day